This got loads of you going online today. A Shropshire taxi driver with decades of military service has been left baffled after a local Green Party councillor said displaying a union flag in taxis was needlessly divisive. Watch and listen. They sent me an email stating that I was in breach of advertising standards and I had to remove the Cross of St George and the Union Jack from my vehicle. It's needlessly divisive to introduce um, flags to um, taxis, so I, I find it unfair, discriminatory, and I, I'm surprised it would even be legal to, to do this. Ridiculous. So, to restore my faith in the great British public, I headed out to East London earlier today to see what people there thought of our union flag. It shows unity, right? Mm. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think you need to proud the way you live, innit? I was born and raised the way respecting the flag, brought up protecting the flag. If they do try and ban it, it will cause it will cause massive drama. And every country has their own flag and it's not at all racist. They should be proud of it. And you can see Palestinian flags, so why not British flags? Would you ever vote for a party? that said that this was divisive, that they, they, thought, they thought that this flag was divisive. No, I wouldn't, because they've no sense of worth, really, have they? Literally couldn't find anyone who thought it was a bad thing. So tonight I am asking, should we be more proud of our country's flag? Let me know your thoughts. Email me, gbviews at gbnews.com. You can tweet me at gbnews. Go and take part in our poll right now. I'll bring you those results in a few short moments. But first, going ahead to head on this, our anti-racism activist Ken Hines and the Falklands veteran Simon Weston. Chaps, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Simon, I will start with you. Should we be more proud of our flag, do you think? And what do you make of these calls to ban it because it's divisive? Well, first and foremost, I don't think we should be ashamed of our flag. It's part of our national identity. It's our symbol. What went on many, many years ago is of, it, it, it's not my responsibility. And it's not today's society's responsibility. If people are offended by it, they have a problem. It's their problem. It shouldn't be our problem. Please, you know, it shouldn't be banned. People are entitled to display anything they want, as long as there's nothing in there which is directly attacking anybody mm. of any other ethnicity. They should be people should be allowed to live as free and as happy a life as they possibly can. I have absolutely no problem with that. I am a complete anti-racist. I do not like racism at all. But I do not see that our flags in this country are any more divisive than flags from other countries. And we allow lots of people to do it. We even allowed all the, those Palestinian supporters to do that at the Cenotaph, which mm. caused great outrage amongst veterans. But it still went ahead. I don't yeah. see why we should ban anybody's uh, identity or visions of any symbolism that identifies the country they are from. And especially if you've served in the armed forces, you are entitled to show that your support is for your country. You don't ban football supporters, so why should you ban a taxi okay. driver that has served, that has served, put his life on the line for his country? He should be entitled to do this. Ken, do you find the Union flag, the Union Jack, divisive? Um, in some situation, but as Simon quite clearly states, and I agree with everything that he says in, in regards that there's situation when people use it for ulterior motive to cause fear, alarm and distress. We saw that with the far right when they came up to say protecting the Churchill statues and things of that nature. But largely on the large whole, even I wave the St. George's flag on a sport, sporting occasion. And I don't see anything wrong in, in raising the Union Jack or the St. George's flag mm. Uh, on, so long as the, the, the intention is, is correct. And as he says, Mr. Brockers, he served for the country and he should have every right to be proud of what he's done and the way that he wants to display it. All right, so Simon, what do you make of this kind of, I would argue it as like student social media based politics where you get these pillocks from the Green Party who ever saying, oh, it's divisive and I can't believe it. It will be legal in this country to do... Do those people need to get out more? I was on the streets of Stratford earlier on, an incredibly diverse place, speaking to a massive range of people right across different age demographics. I couldn't find a single sausage who said to me that they thought that this guy from the Green Party was right. 
the guy from the Green Party obviously has absolutely no attention from anybody. And this is his way of finding attention. Both Ken and I, myself, we both agree that nobody should use any symbol of national identity to offend others deliberately. Because that's just inflaming a situation. There's so much sensitivity around so many things today and people do get offended by so much so quickly without any rhyme or reason. But this is, this is a situation where nobody has done a single thing to anybody. All it is, it says England, it's the cross of St. George. Look, the Welsh aren't even represented on the, unif on the Union flag. We aren't even represented. Northern Ireland is, Scotland, England, but not Wales. But we don't go around banning flags. We don't go around banning anybody sort of celebrating their identity. I, I think, you know, we see Jamaican people who go to the cricket. We see Pakistani people, Indian people, all dressed up in their national garb. And why not? I think it's a wonderful spectacle. I think to see people celebrate their cultural heritage okay. is right. But we as Brits should not be denied from doing exactly the same thing in our own country. Can you, does anyone, do you think, have a right to be offended in this country about our, our national flag? I mean, you know, you were alluding to, I think, a, a, a historic time, thankfully historic time, where, you know, maybe it was, it was monopolised by uh, people who, who were racist, do you think? Look, my thing is, I understand that the Union Jack has got, you know, certain symbols around um, colonialism. And, and the effects that has had. But the fact of the matter is, we have to move on from those dark days because then they know Britain is no longer a superpower. And the fact of the matter is, the people of today should not be held accountable for the people who have done things over historical uh, historical time. So my thing is that with Simon, I, I, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel his emotion. I feel his passion, and I think he's absolutely 100% right to have that and, ex and express it as he feels fit. All right, look, both of you, can I just say thank you very, very much for coming on. Really great to get both of your views there. That is anti-racism activist Ken Hines and Falklands veteran Simon Weston. Look, we contacted Shropshire Council earlier today. They told us Shropshire Council's Strategic Licensing Committee met on the 11th of January to discuss a change to its hackney carriage and private hire licensing policy 2023 to 2027. Following concerns raised about the Council's position on the display of national flags, can I just interject here at this point and just say... I think it will come as a surprise to many people to learn that on the QT, it was initially passed, that there should be no representation, it should not be allowed to have any representation of a union flag in a, in a black cap. I don't remember there being a massive hoo-ha about that at the time. I think it goes a long way to just showing what can actually be swept through during the back door if people aren't actually on top of it. But anyway, they continued at a meeting. It was agreed to permit the display of the union flag on taxis and private hire vehicles, an amendment that was put forward by local market Drayton Council. Look, 